what's up guys welcome back to my channel again today's video is all about dormitories we are going to be doing a dormitory tour in turkey there are basically two kinds of dormitories we have the private ones and we have the government ones um, we refer to the government dormitories as kayaka dormitories and currently i'm seeing a kayaka dormitory <laughs> My dormitory is one of the oldest, if not the oldest dormitory in Ankara, and I think it should be the biggest. And basically, the dormitory has four main blocks. You have block A, block B, block C, and block D. If you enter the dormitory from this side, and the first thing you'll be seeing is their block. It's B block, and on its right side is A block, on its left side is C block, and the last one down there is D block. And we have the administrative office, and we have one other block that we call Yemekhani generally, but inside it are different um, facilities. Hi, <laughs> Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Look at facilities you find in this dormitory are a football field, a small one, a basketball court, a volleyball court, a tennis court, a very beautiful garden, a small fountain. Entrance that is the main entrance that is where we are coming from, as you see. And if you look to the left side, you have this um, what are they called? I don't know. In Turkish, it's called camellia. Yeah, but, yeah, in Turkish, it is called camellia. And um, on the right side, you also have more camellia. If you look down there, you see that you have the running track. also find a gym you would find a tailor and barber shop you would find a table tennis room you would find um, the dining and the canteen of course that's all basically So basically, the structure of this dormitory is that it has four main blocks and two other blocks called the Mimikani and the administrative block. So as I said, there are four blocks in this dormitory. The structure of these four blocks is the same. In every block, there are five floors in total. On floors 1 to 4, there are 26 rooms divided into two sides. 13 on the right, 13 on the left. We also have four or five toilets and bathrooms on each side of the floor. That makes a total of eight bathrooms and eight toilets. Well, it could be 10 10 though, it differs from block to block. This is the bathroom in their block. This is basically what it is. One, two, three, four. Now to the toilet. This is heater for heat, and you have a mirror here. So, this is the toilet, basically, 
what it looks like. In every block, there are three libraries, or let's call them reading rooms, that sit between every two floors. So between floors one and two, there is a library, between two and three, there is another library, and the same for floors three and four. The last floor is minus one, and that's where we have the canteen and the storage room. Okay, so this is um, B block, and uh, just beside it here is A block. Uh, you see this down part of A block, this downside is where the canteen is. And um, this building here, this uh, external part is the library. So you can see one, two, three, four. The first one is not library, why the remaining three are libraries. On floors 2, 3 and 4, between the rooms on the right and the rooms on the left is a wide space used for drying clothes and ironing. There is a washing room there and the small mask is directly opposite the washing room. Washing machine room where we wash our clothes and we spread them here on the racks here. The mask. Okay, so guys, this is what um, our room is like. Currently in my room, there are just three bunks in my room and um, six cupboards. This is one, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's one behind there. Yeah, six. So there are six cupboards. In every room, you find six cupboards. Or uh, if the room has um, four bunks, you'll find um, eight cupboards and then we also have this big shelf yeah this brown big shelf you'll find it in every room yeah and uh, we just use it for shoes and miscellaneous things uh, yeah and this is my small studio <laughs> where I do my YouTube stuff yeah in the room in every room there is a fridge as well uh, there is a table and maybe two or three chairs depending on the number of people staying in the room currently we are two I and my roommates and um, this is his cupboard this is mine yeah and this is my bed down here yeah and uh, that's basically it. the last thing in a room every room has heater yeah every room has a heater yeah we, we only put it on in winter so i think that's all basically we have that's all we have in a room yeah the view from my room is uh, this from my room i can only see the running track but i don't think you guys will be able to see it because it's quite far from here and because it is uh, summer now the flowers are out but in winter all these trees will be dried so you'll be able to see as far as possible anyways so that is all in my room that is the setting that's what we have okay guys so that brings us to the end of our dormitory tour i know some of you may be wondering if all rooms are like this of course not rooms differ from dormitories to dormitory uh if you if you know Brizzy Kwan, she has made a video on dormitory i think it is also a government dormitory so you can check her video uh it is a government dormitory and the setting is quite similar but you see that the design is a bit different and they don't have bunked beds like ours here and Shakib Ul Hassan's video on dormitory too the dormitory in that video is very similar to the dormitory I stayed in last year a private dormitory so if you want to know what a private dormitory feels like then Shakib Ul Hassan's video is another good one you can watch yeah so by the time you watch these three together you would get to know what um, a dormitory looks like in Turkey or the kind of dormitory you are likely to stay. If you are wondering whether you are going to stay in a government dormitory or a private dormitory, um, I cannot give you a direct answer. Normally, as a Turkey bus like student, you get placed in a private dormitory when you first come to Turkey. Um, I don't know anyone yet who was placed in a government dormitory in his first year. 
yeah so you get placed in a private dormitory you stay in a private dormitory uh, for your first year for your language year and you may continue in that private dormitory till you graduate and i know some people who were later moved to um, government dormitories or, go or dormitories that were closer to their campus or their uh, faculties yeah so it may differ but generally most people stay in a private dormitory and um, later they may move to a government dormitory in their second or third or fourth year that is what i know how they do it how they organize it that i don't know currently i think staying in this dormitory would cost you about 300 lira per month while a private dormitory would cost you maybe 600 to 1500 lira depending on how expensive the private dormitory is now talking about private dormitories um, the difference is that they are they accommodate lesser number of people in this dormitory, since it is the biggest, it can take up to 2,000 people if you do the mathematics. But in a private dormitory, you can have maybe at most 100 or 150 or 200 people. Private dormitories are more beautiful though, especially internally. Okay, in terms of external view, some don't even have enough space, so they can't be as beautiful as this dormitory here. But generally, internally, private dormitories are usually more beautiful. And in a private dormitory, it can be just one two or three in a room in my former dormitory it was a private dormitory and we were just three in a room yeah and the dormitory had almost everything you also find there in terms of facilities it's just that things like the courts basketball courts uh, football field and all those things are not present there the private dormitory had about six floors um for floor one two three had the same set in the same number of rooms and um on floor number three you'd find something like a sitting room i can also call it a cafe because we have hot tea from there and we can sit there to watch football matches and on floor zero that is where the administrative offices are that is where you do your registration and what have you and floor minus one and two in floor minus one there are some rooms there and there's also another big sitting room yeah <laughs> i don't know why i call them sitting rooms though a big sitting room like but um you pray there there's a small mosque there and then um, it's also a very good place to study or have meetings and seminars and what have you. Then floor minus two was the dining and um, a gym was also there and that was where we also played table tennis. Yeah, so that was basically, that's basically the setting of my private dormitory. If you want to understand how a dormitory, how a private dormitory would look like exactly, then um, I would recommend you to watch Shakib Al Hassan's video on the dormitory. This dormitory is a private dormitory and it is very similar to my dormitory to the private dormitory i stayed in last year yeah so if you want to understand what that is what it looks like what you know the design how different it is from a government dormitory then that is also a good one for you yeah so i think that brings us to the end of the video i hope you guys liked it if you liked it please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and leave your comments down there i'm glad i finally made this video now you guys liked it so that's it for me for today i'll see you guys in the next one Oh,